Hi everyone! In this video, we are going to introduce you to the dynamic element and how to use these options to create custom templates and designs. Dynamic elements and options play an essential role in creating layout templates. With the dynamic options, it's possible to create personalized templates by populating data from various WordPress sources. Let's give it a try and test the dynamic elements in action. Let's start by creating a custom template with the page builder and dynamic options for our blog posts that, as you can see, currently have a standard layout. As first step, we need to create a new content block and save it with a descriptive name, such as my post header dynamic. Now, to not distract us too much from the dynamic options that are the subject of this tutorial, I paste a layout that I have already prepared. This way we can focus on the dynamic options. I open the front end editor, but if you prefer, you can continue with the back end editor. Here we have a straightforward header design. Similar to the blog post, you can import with demo content. The header is composed of a main row with a background image placeholder, plus we have a title, a subtitle, and two info box modules one used to show the metadata, the other to show the author. Please note that all the page builder elements that have dynamic options have been grouped in a dedicated tab in the list of all modules. From this tab, you can easily filter items with dynamic options when you need them. Let's start with the heading. When we look at the heading module, we can see that one of the first options is dynamic heading. Here we can set dynamic sources. In this case, since it will be the main heading, we set get the title. Now the heading has become dynamic. Let's move on to subheading. Here we want to show a summary of the article to encourage you to read it. We can then set the option get the excerpt or description. For those who don't know it, the excerpt in WordPress is just a little snippet associated with each post. In each post editor, we can activate it from the screen options. Here is our excerpt. So going back to our content block by activating this option, we'll make sure that this heading is for each post populated by the corresponding excerpt. Now we have to make sure that the background becomes dynamic. For example, this placeholder image needs to be replaced for each post by the corresponding feature image. If we open the row settings and browse the style tab, we can see that we have the dynamic background option. Once activated, you can eventually choose whether the source is the featured image or the secondary feature image. To complete the header as introduced, we have two info box modules with different settings that are dynamic by default. The first module will print the metadata, while the second one will print the author of the post. That's it, let's save the content block. Now I navigate to the theme options, post, header, type, content block, and select the content block we created. Even if we've only created the header, Let's see how it works. Let's save the theme options. Are you ready? I refresh the first article and... Here we are. As you can see, our dynamic design matrix is populated with context information. The main heading displays the post title, the secondary heading displays the excerpt, we have the background image that displays the featured image and the additional information used from the info box module. Obviously, the same layout is used for the second post. Please note that they share the same design, but all info and data are dynamic. Now let's go create the content part. I created a new content block and I saved it with a descriptive name, such as my post content dynamic. As before, I paste a pre-made layout so we can focus on dynamic options. I prefer to switch to the front end editor. Things are basic here. We have a row with a text block. This text block will become a dynamic placeholder for the content of our posts. To do this, we just need to open the module 
and in the dynamic text option, choose the value Get the Content. Let's save the content block. Now I navigate to the theme options Post Content Type Content Block and select the just created content block. Let's save Theme Options. OK, Theme Options are now updated. And let's update our blog posts. Here we are. As you can see, the matrix of our design is applied to all the articles. So we created our first dynamic design. Right now, we have a layout created with the page builder for our blog posts, so every change becomes immediate and there are so many possibilities. For example, let's try a slightly more creative solution. I go back to the content block, I open the column settings, I give the column a bit more padding, and I shift on the Y axis our content through the off grid options. I save the content block and I navigate to our blog posts to preview the result. Post refresh. And here we go. This is a simple variation which highlights the content of our other articles. So, with the dynamic options and elements and the page builder options, you can create centralized, easy to maintain, unique, and tailored to your design's layout needs. Shall we try another example? Maybe we can create a dynamic template for our portfolios that, as you can see, are now using a default layout. I'll proceed quickly and start the work with an already established design. Also, in this case, I created two content blocks, one acting as a header and the other as content. In the header, I have an image carousel created with the Media Gallery module. Here I activate the Dynamic Media option and I set the dynamic source to Gallery Media. In this way, the page media of each portfolio will be used for the creation of this carousel. In a few words, the images of each portfolio will substitute these placeholder images. For those who do not know it, in each portfolio, it's possible to assign page media. These are the images of each portfolio that will be used by the Dynamic Media Gallery. So now that the Dynamic Source option is active, we can save this content block that we will use later as Portfolio Page Template Header. In the content part Dedicated Content Block, I have a heading to display the title, a text block to display the portfolio excerpt, a portfolio details module, a divider element, and a share module. In the heading module, I activate the dynamic Get the Title option. In the text block module, I set to Get the excerpt or description. Then we have the Portfolio Details module, which is dynamic by default, that will display the portfolio details of each project in our portfolio. As before, I navigate to Theme Options but this time in Single Portfolio, and I set the relative content blocks for the header and for the content part. In the header, I select the My Portfolio Header content block. In the content, I select the My Portfolio Content content block, and as always, I save the theme options to preview the result. Let's check our portfolio items. Here we are. As you can see with our dynamic content blocks, we created the basic template for our portfolio items. So we can design our portfolio pages in a way that suits us best. We can try different layout possibilities. For example, now I'm going to apply some quick changes to test another design. I modify the carousel to a stacked layout by the Media Gallery option. If you haven't seen it, watch the video dedicated to this powerful module for more details. I save the content block,
page refresh. And of course, the new stack layout is applied unless otherwise specified to all portfolios. Which layout do you prefer, carousel or stack layout? These are just two simple examples. Thanks to the power of Page Builder, you can create the perfect one for your website. Since we have seen an example of blog posts and an example of a portfolio item, please note that in the same way, it is also possible to create completely custom product page templates thanks to dynamic WooCommerce options. Thus, I refer you to the Product Builder video, where you can find in detail all the information you need to create a unique and customized product page according to your needs. Before closing this introduction to the dynamic elements, it is essential to note that it is possible not only to create templates for final single pages, but also to create custom design for the archives and category pages. For example, it is possible to define the custom layout of a blog, a portfolio, or a shop main page. The post module, that is the base module with which you create blogs, portfolios, or shops, has a dynamic option named Dynamic Source. Thanks to this option, it will be possible to populate the post module according to the context in which it is used. I won't go into more detail as we have dedicated videos, as the category pages and archives and the main shop page tutorials. But remember that with this option, you can use the post module to create any kind of design for your blog, as in this example, portfolio or shop. Do you find dynamic elements and dynamic options interesting? Are you ready to free your imagination and start to design the perfect templates page for your needs?